Hi, I'd like to thank Masters University, Coach Schroeder and Coach Bernier for having us here. I'd like to thank Brian Yokoyama for such a gracious introduction. And Brian spoke about the pole carry, the pole run, the start of the run, the plant, and the takeoff. We're going to take it from there, and we're going to talk about the pole vault swing up and how to add energy to the system. Here's the cord of the pole. We're gonna talk about the cord of the pole a lot. This is the force application line. This is the line that the forces are being applied from the pole tip through the top hand. No matter where the pole is in the position of the pole, it's pushing from the pole tip through the top hand. And that's the direction the forces are being applied. The tap, we're gonna talk about the tap. The tap is the connection between the top hand, shoulders, hips, trail leg, extended down towards the pole tip. So we're gonna swing that body down towards the pole tip. And when everything comes in line, that's the tap. The tap in the pole vault, top hand, shoulders, hips, and trail foot pointed towards the box, towards the pole tip is the tap. In gymnastics, it's straight down. So on a high bar, it's straight down. He's loading that bar. We're gonna about, talk about the two phases of the swing up. There's the in phase and the up phase. The in is everything before the tap. The up is after the tap we'll talk about. And there's two ways to add energy to the system. There's muscle energy and there's sequential motion. There's what comes first, the legs, the arms. And we're gonna talk about uh, that sequence in the in position. And then we're gonna talk about it in the up. And that's from Dr. Mark Walsh, biomechanics professor at the University of Miami. Here's the swing up. The swing up is in the core of the pole. They starts from the bottom up. There's the part of the sequence, the start of the sequence from the bottom up. And we have three different voltages here doing the same thing. They hit the tap, top arm, shoulders, hips, trail leg, and a nice long leg extended down here, extended towards the pole tip. Mondo's got both legs down here. He's got a fur, he's got more mass that's farther away from the top hand that he can drive up and lift up the cord of the pole as a counter force to pull this pole down more and compress the pole more. The more we compress the pole, the more energy is added to the system. And it also shortens the lever length to move the pole. Here's the tap and the swing up, the initial part of the swing up. And I put this on a vertical plane here. So you see the cord of the pole is now vertical. So you can see how this up action of the leveling does knees up. He's not swinging out. He does knees up off the tap. And that's how he compresses that pole more, adds energy to the system. And then on the high bar, it's keeping the top hand, shoulders and the hips in line everything extended down. And the first thing to kick up is straight up this line. Here's the cord of the high bar straight up and down. It doesn't move. And here we are, the cord of that energy force application and that sequence of motion. And in plyos, nice long arms. Thank you, Katie Nagata is our gold medal winner. And nice long arms. And the first thing that comes up are the forearm. It comes up from the bottom, elbows drive up which drives the forearm up and this angle here closes. And here it is in the pole vault where it's nice long body. The first thing that comes up from the bottom up, leg comes up, hips come up, and this continues to close. And this is a plyometric jump. He's gonna jump up onto a box. So he already has that forward tilt and he's got nice long arms. The first thing to swing up are the arms, the forearm, the hands swing up, and then the elbows drive up and the hand continues to close this elbow here so it can drive up. And same thing in the pole vault. There it is. I tilted that force application line, the cord of the pole at that same angle. So you can see it's up, hips drive up, legs continue to swing up and go up the cord of the pole. Every time you go up the cord of the pole, it pulls the pole down, it compresses the pole, moves it forward and adds energy to the system using sequential motion. Here it is, I laid these out so you can see a vertical line and I laid, turned the cord of the pole to a vertical line so you can see how it works. Nice and long, pointed down towards the cord of the pole, hips still down, legs are coming up, legs come up hard, hips start to rise, 
legs still stay on top, on top of the hips. So when the hips drive up, the legs are trying to get close to the core of the pole there, and they continue to extend up. Same thing here, long body, straight leg kick up, hips start to drive up the top. The shoulders are still in line with the core of the pole, driving down towards the pole tip. Hips rise up, legs rise up, and all that rising up is a counter force to keep that pole compressed and moving, adding energy to the system. And we're gonna talk about shoot the gap. So what I call shoot the gap, that's the body that's between your body, you line it up between the pole and your top arm and the crossbar and the body goes up in that line. So when I have the body up in that line, Here's the crossbar out here and the body's just inside that line. When the pole shoots you up, that long body is gonna start to rotate slowly. So the bar comes, pole starts to shoot you up, body starts to rotate slowly. And then what you do is pike, just like a high jumper arches, pikes and rotates over the bar. So the body is rotating here. You see that long body rotating, it starts to rotate, the pike starts, and then the spinning action over the bar. Okay, here we go. This is well, the tap that we talked about. Notice in the tap here, it's not a perfect C. It's a sequence of move. The top arm comes in line with the cord of the pole. The chest comes in line with the cord of the pole, then the hips, then the leg compress the pole more to move the pole. There's the tap. The arm comes in tight to the core of the pole. Top arm, then the chest, then the hips, and then the legs. Compresses the pole and moves it forward. Same thing with Levellini. Notice the arm is always in that core of the pole. There's the tap. Here's the kick up. There's the next sequence. This is the up part that we talked about. There's the tap and we're gonna kick up from the bottom up. From the bottom up creates a counter force. The top arm, ship, hips and Shoulders, everything still pointed at the pole tip. The legs coming up this way creates a counter force, compresses the pole and moves it forward. Here's the same action, except for it's double knees up. Nice long extension. The first thing that comes up are the knees. Top hand, shoulders, hips, still pointed right at the pole tip. There's pressure on this top arm, yes, because the cord of the pole is moving and that changes the angle of that hand. So you see that top arm coming forward, but it's always in the cord of the pole. Here's double legs kick up. Two long legs, legs are further, further down. He's got more mass towards the pole tip. So he's got more mass to lift up as a counter force. Double legs coming up, creates more counter force, compresses that pole more and moves the pole more. Here's up the cord of the pole. They kick up the cord of the pole, the top hand, shoulders, hips, still driving down towards the pole tip as the legs kick up parallel to the cord of the pole. And continues to kick up as the hips rise, the legs go up that cord, finishes in a position ready to shoot the gap. So the body is in a straight line, in a straight line between the top arm and this vertical line of the crossbar. So he's in that position. So the pole is just gonna launch him up and he's gonna start to rotate. 
There's that, the legs are up halfway already. The legs continue to kick up as the hips rise, finishing in a position where the body gets straight between the top arm and the pole of the crossbar. There's that shoot the gap, nice long body. It starts to rotate and then when it reaches the bar, pike position, and then the pike shortens that lever length of that long body and it spins over the bar. Here's everything put together. The tap, the kick up, hips rising, legs continue to go and shooting that gap. Knees up, hips rise, knees continue to go up right between the pole and the crossbar. Here we go. Nice, good example of how Brian was talking about that pole carry. So when we do our strength exercises, we stabilize top arm, shoulders, and hips in that this is the cord of the bar. This is the force application. That bar is always pushing straight up. So we break it down and use, learn to kick that leg up and use muscle energy to kick up and the sequential motion. Then we add the next part of the leg continues to kick as the hips rise. So when the hips are up high, the legs are in here, not out there. The legs are above the hips so we can continue to drive them up. They're in a position to drive up. It's a lifting action up the cord of the pole. It's a good example of the difference between high bar and lifting up the cord of the pole or the cord of the bar. Notice how that bar always snaps back and the giants and up the cord, up that force application line of straight up. When I go legs up, hips up, legs continue to come up the cord. Notice how that bar snaps back as soon as he's halfway up, losing its energy. Just the same thing. It's like doing um, spotting an athlete that doesn't have the energy, doesn't have the strength to do it. So all they're doing is changing that angle to make it easier. So spotting an athlete to be able to do that. Here's the vault barn in Texas, Coach Kevin Hall. So he added that strength fate, that strength part of it. It's we can add energy to the system using muscle energy and sequential motion. So what coach Kevin Hall did, he took it to the next extreme. He's going for that strength. How much strength can we add to that sequence of moves? So adding the med ball between the length ankles and the ankles come up first, hips rise, and you can continue to lift that up, developing that strength, that strength and sequence of motion, getting both of them in one workout And here's the results. This is Vault Barn, Woodsboro, Texas, Coach Kevin Hall, junior, 17 foot, six inch vault. There goes the tap, up the cord, legs go up, legs continue to kick, hips are up, shoots the gap. And that's a high school vaulter jumping on pole 60 pounds over his weight and coach Kevin Hall there. Thanks for you very much. That's thanks for coming for the presentation and how to add energy to the system using sequential motion and muscle energy. Thanks for coming.